And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on a subject that I've entitled, You've Already Got It. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of fun out of this. We'll have people call in and say, I want that book that Andrew's talking about. And so our prayer ministers will say, you've already got it. And they'll say, I do. And they'll say, no, but we'll send it to you. And they'll say, well, you said I already had it. That's the title of the book. You've already got it. And the uh, subtitle is, So Quit Trying to Get It. And what I'm trying to get across is that Jesus has already accomplished everything. When He said on the cross, it is finished. He had paid the price. Our victory was won. He is now seated at the Father's right hand, and He is not healing people today, saving people today, delivering people today. He's already done it 2,000 years ago, and all we are doing is appropriating by faith what Jesus has already purchased. And if you begin to understand this, it changes everything. One of the things it does, it takes away this sense of, I've got to do something to make God move. No, God has already anticipated every need that you'll ever have, and He's already moved before you ever had a need. The supply was made before the need existed. Man, this is huge what I'm saying, and yet most people just can't seem to put this into practice in their everyday life. That's the reason I'm encouraging you to please get this teaching, because I say this so many different ways that this will change the way you relate to God. Let me use an example over here in Genesis chapter 1. I'm not going to take time to read the whole chapter, but Genesis chapter 1 is where God created the heavens and the earth. He created the dry land, the moon, the stars. He created all of the vegetation that we have on the earth. He created all of the animals in the land and in the sea. And then He created mankind. And after He had done all of these things, look at this in Genesis chapter 1 and in verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you. Notice the terminology. I have given you. He didn't say, I am giving you, or He didn't say, I'm going in the future to give you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree-yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given, not I am going to give, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And so I could go into more explanation, but I'm just trying to point out that the Lord didn't create Adam and Eve, and then they came to Him and they said, God, I'm hungry. And He says, oh, well, I, I, here, let me create something for you to eat. No, He created all of the fruit, all of the vegetation before mankind existed. Have you ever thought of this? Why did God create man last on the sixth day? On the sixth day, He created the animals, and then He created man. So on the very end of the sixth day, right before God finished all of creation, and then Genesis chapter 2 says He rested on the seventh day. The very last thing God did was to create mankind. And yet there's many scriptures that show we were really the crown jewel of His creation. We were the focus of His creation. He created all of these things in this world for us. Right here, He says, I've given you all of these herbs, all of this fruit, all of these trees. That's what it is for food for you and for the beast of the earth. We were the focus of God's creation, and yet He didn't create us first. He created us last. Did you know, if He he had created us first, we'd have had to dog paddle on water for three days or four days until God created the dry land. It wasn't ready for us yet. And then when He says, let there be trees and let there be all of these things, those things didn't start as just little seeds and took a hundred years to grow into mature tree. He created everything mature. He created all of the animals full grown and then they reproduced by seed. But my point is, if He would have created us first, not only would we have had to tread water for three or four days, 
until he created dry land, but then we'd have to dodge the trees as they were coming up, the mountains as they were being formed, and things like this. It wasn't ready for us. He created us last, not because we were last in importance. We were first in, of, in importance, but it wasn't ready for us. He prepared it so that when we got hungry, we didn't have to say, oh, God, I'm hungry. And then he says, oh, well, here, let me create something for you to eat. He anticipated the need, and he had so much food on this planet. You know, today we have over 7 billion people on this planet, and God has never created new food. He has never created new sources of food. He created all of this in the beginning, and this earth now is sustaining over 7 billion people. It could have done that when there was only Adam and Eve. He created such an excess, such an overabundance that it was just amazing. He didn't wait until we needed to breathe. And we said, God, I've got to breathe. I'm desperate to breathe. And then he had to create air. No, he created air and anticipated our needs. And he set it up so that the trees actually take the carbon dioxide that we exhale, and that feeds the trees, and then the trees produce oxygen as a result so that this climate, uh, the whole earth reproduces itself, cleanses itself. And so God anticipated all of these kind of things. And in the same way, when you got born again, God anticipated everything that you would ever need, any healing that you would ever need. You don't need God to come heal you. I'm going to be sharing this in more detail as we continue through this, but in first chapter of the book of Ephesians, verses 18 through the end of the chapter, he's already put the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, raising from the dead power on the inside of you. It's not out there that you have to pray it down and hold your mouth just right and say everything just right, and if you do everything and push all the right buttons, then God will give it to you. No, it's already on the inside of you if you're born again. You already have raising from the dead power. He anticipated that you would need that. So when you need a healing in your body, you don't need to say, oh, God, please heal me. 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes you were healed. It's already done. You aren't headed to a victory. You are coming from a victory. Jesus has already triumphed over sickness, over disease, over poverty, over oppression, over everything. He's already won the victory, and that victory lives on the inside of you. That victory is named Jesus, and you have His nature and His power living on the inside of you. You don't need God to come do something. What you need to do is find out what you've got and learn the laws of faith that govern how the power of God flows and allow it to flow out of you. You don't have to beg God to come and do it. No more than Adam and Eve had to beg God to feed them. Oh, God, help me to breathe. No, he had anticipated every need, and he had made the supply before the need existed. In the same way, God has made the supply for you before you ever had a need. If you're facing financial problems today, it says in Deuteronomy 8:18 that you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He that gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant, which He swore unto your fathers as it is this day. He doesn't give you wealth specifically. There's a lot of people that watching this program that you need a financial miracle right now, and you're just praying and asking God to just give you money. God doesn't give you money. God gave you the power to get wealth an anointing to get wealth, the ability to get wealth, and you have to operate in faith and then go lay your hand to something and do something, and you can produce wealth. But God, He doesn't have money in heaven. You know, they pave their streets with pure gold. I mean, gold to us is important. We put it in banks. He puts it on His streets. It doesn't mean anything in heaven. Money doesn't exist in heaven. God doesn't have money to give you, but God gives you power and anointing to get wealth. Your hands are blessed so that Deuteronomy chapter 28 says, He will bless the work of your hands. You go set your hand unto something. You start doing something, and God will supernaturally multiply it. But did you know a hundred times zero 
IS ZERO. AND THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE ASKING GOD TO JUST GIVE ME WEALTH, AND THEY'RE SITTING THERE, THEY AREN'T DOING ANYTHING, THEY AREN'T WORKING FOR, THEY AREN'T WORKING A JOB, THEY AREN'T LOOKING FOR A JOB, THEY AREN'T DOING ANYTHING, AND THAT THEY'RE JUST WANTING MONEY TO FALL OUT OF THE SKY. MONEY IS NOT GOING TO FALL OUT OF THE SKY. GOD IS NOT GOING TO COUNTERFEIT UNITED STATES CURRENCY OR ENGLISH CURRENCY OR BRITISH, YOU KNOW, ANY, ANY NATION ON THIS PLANET, GOD IS NOT GOING TO COUNTERFEIT YOUR CURRENCY. GOD HAS GIVEN YOU AN ANOINTING. YOU GO SET YOUR HAND UNTO SOMETHING, AND HE WILL BEGIN TO BLESS IT, AND IT WILL SUPERNATURALLY PROVIDE YOUR NEEDS. BUT SEE, GOD ISN'T CAUGHT BY SURPRISE. IF THE DOCTOR COMES AND TELLS YOU THAT YOU'VE GOT CANCER, THAT YOU'VE ONLY GOT A SHORT TIME TO LIVE, YOU DON'T HAVE TO GO TO GOD AND SAY, OH, GOD, THE DOCTOR SAYS THIS. WHAT AM I GOING TO DO? AND IT'S SOMETHING BRAND NEW, AND GOD, CAN YOU heal, HEAL THIS? WOULD YOU DO SOMETHING? NO, GOD HAS ALREADY ANTICIPATED THIS, AND HE PUT THE SAME POWER ON THE INSIDE OF YOU THAT WAS USED TO RAISE JESUS CHRIST FROM THE DEAD. YOU DON'T NEED HIM TO GIVE YOU POWER. YOU DON'T NEED HIM TO STRETCH FORTH HIS MIGHTY HAND AND TOUCH YOU. AND ALL OF THESE PRAYERS THAT WE PRAY, NO, GOD HAS ALREADY TOUCHED YOU. HE'S ALREADY PUT THAT RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER IN YOU. YOU KNOW, I'VE QUOTED THIS A NUMBER OF TIMES. LET ME JUST TURN OVER TO EPHESIANS CHAPTER 1 AND START SHOWING THIS TO YOU OUT OF SCRIPTURE. IN EPHESIANS CHAPTER 1, IT SAYS IN VERSE 1, PAUL, AN APOSTLE OF JESUS CHRIST, BY THE WILL OF GOD, TO THE SAINTS WHICH ARE AT EPHESUS, AND TO THE FAITHFUL IN CHRIST JESUS, GRACE BE TO YOU IN PEACE FROM GOD OUR FATHER AND FROM THE LORD JESUS CHRIST. BLESSED BE THE GOD AND FATHER OF OUR LORD JESUS CHRIST, WHO HATH, NOTICE THE TERMINOLOGY, WHO HATH BLESSED US WITH ALL SPIRITUAL BLESSINGS IN HEAVENLY PLACES IN CHRIST JESUS. IT DIDN'T SAY GOD CAN BLESS US. GOD WILL BLESS US. NO, GOD HAS BLESSED US. THIS IS THE POINT THAT I'M TRYING TO GET ACROSS. SO MANY PEOPLE RECOGNIZE THAT GOD HAS THE ABILITY TO DO THINGS, BUT THEY DON'T BELIEVE HE HAS USED IT YET. THEY BELIEVE THAT THEY HAVE TO ASK GOD FOR HEALING. THEY HAVE TO ASK GOD FOR PROSPERITY. THEY HAVE TO ASK GOD FOR JOY, FOR PEACE, FOR ANOINTING, FOR ALL OF THESE KIND OF THINGS. NO, GOD HAS ALREADY BLESSED US WITH ALL SPIRITUAL BLESSINGS. NOT SOME, BUT ALL SPIRITUAL BLESSINGS IN HEAVENLY PLACES IN CHRIST. AND I'VE HEARD SOME PEOPLE CHALLENGE ME ON THIS AND SAY, WELL, THOSE BLESSINGS ARE IN SPIRITUAL THINGS. YOU'VE GOT TO PRAY AND ASK GOD TO BRING THEM DOWN INTO THE PHYSICAL REALM. THAT'S NOT WHAT THIS IS SAYING. IF YOU LOOK THIS UP IN ANY OF THE MODERN TRANSLATIONS, I FORGET WHICH ONE IT IS NOW, BUT IT ACTUALLY SAYS THAT HE'S GIVEN US ALL EARTHLY AND SPIRITUAL BLESSINGS IN THIS LIFE. THIS IS JUST AN OLD ENGLISH WAY OF SAYING THAT GOD'S ALREADY BLESSED US. WHATEVER YOU'RE ASKING GOD TO DO, HE'S ALREADY DONE IT. IF YOU'RE ASKING GOD TO HEAL YOU, HE'S ALREADY HEALED YOU. 1 PETER 2.24 SAYS, WHO HIS OWN SELF BEAR OUR SINS IN HIS OWN BODY ON THE TREE, THAT WE BEING DEAD TO SINS SHOULD LIVE UNTO RIGHTEOUSNESS BY WHOSE STRIPES YOU WERE HEALED. IT DIDN'T SAY YOU ARE GOING TO BE HEALED. YOU CAN BE HEALED. YOU MIGHT BE HEALED. NO, YOU WERE HEALED. JESUS HAS ALREADY PLACED THIS RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. YOU KNOW, I'M GOING TO CONTINUE TO GOING THROUGH EPHESIANS 1, VERSE BY VERSE, BUT LET ME JUST JUMP DOWN TO VERSE 19, AND IT SAYS, HE'S PRAYING THAT YOUR EYES WOULD BE OPEN TO WHAT IS THE EXCEEDING GREATNESS OF HIS POWER TO USWARD WHO BELIEVE ACCORDING TO THE WORKING OF HIS MIGHTY POWER WHICH HE WROUGHT IN CHRIST WHEN HE RAISED HIM FROM THE DEAD AND SET HIM AT HIS OWN RIGHT HAND IN THE HEAVENLY PLACES. HE'S PRAYING THAT you, YOUR EYES WOULD BE OPEN. HE'S NOT PRAYING THAT GOD WOULD GIVE YOU THIS POWER. HE'S PRAYING THAT YOUR EYES WOULD BE OPENED TO WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE. YOU ALREADY HAVE THE SAME POWER THAT WAS USED TO RAISE JESUS CHRIST FROM THE DEAD. THAT POWER IS NOT OUT THERE SOMEWHERE THAT YOU'VE GOT TO PRAY IT DOWN AND ASK GOD TO GIVE IT TO YOU. IT'S IN YOU. YOU ALREADY HAVE, IF YOU ARE BORN AGAIN, IF JESUS LIVES ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, HE DIDN'T JUST PUT A TINY BIT OF HIMSELF ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. 
HE DIDN'T JUST COME AND PUT ONE FINGER INTO YOUR LIFE. JESUS, IN ALL OF HIS POWER, IN ALL OF HIS ABILITY, LIVES ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. AND EVERYTHING THAT HE HAS AND EVERYTHING THAT HE CAN DO LIVES ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. IT'S ALREADY THERE. YOU DON'T NEED TO ASK GOD, TELL GOD, PLEASE JUST GIVE ME MORE POWER. GOD, GIVE ME MORE FAITH. I'M GOING TO BE TEACHING ON THIS AS WE GO THROUGH THIS SERIES. YOU'VE ALREADY GOT THE SAME FAITH THAT IT USED TO RAISE JESUS CHRIST FROM THE DEAD. YOU DON'T HAVE A FAITH PROBLEM. YOU'VE GOT A KNOWLEDGE PROBLEM. YOU DON'T KNOW WHAT YOU HAVE. AND THAT'S THE REASON THAT THE WORD OF GOD IS SO IMPORTANT, THAT WE HAVE TO MEDITATE IN IT AND LEARN THESE THINGS AND FIND OUT OUR TRUE IDENTITY AND WHAT WE HAVE IN THE SPIRIT. BUT YOU'RE ALREADY BLESSED WITH ALL SPIRITUAL BLESSINGS IN HEAVENLY PLACES. YOU'RE ALREADY BLESSED. AND YET HOW MANY PEOPLE, OH, GOD, JUST PLEASE BLESS ME. I HAVE PEOPLE COME TO ME ALL THE TIME. I, FOR SOME REASON, IT SEEMS LIKE THE AFRICANS MORE THAN MOST PEOPLE. I, I NEVER SEEM TO TALK TO AN AFRICAN THAT DOESN'T COME AND SAY, WOULD YOU PLEASE JUST BLESS ME? AND I ALWAYS QUOTE TO THEM THAT YOU'RE ALREADY BLESSED. WHAT CAN I DO THAT GOD HASN'T DONE? WELL, I KNOW, BUT WOULD YOU BLESS ME? AND, YOU KNOW, I UNDERSTAND WHAT THEY'RE SAYING AND STUFF, BUT REALLY, IT'S A WRONG ATTITUDE. WHEN YOU WERE ASKING ME TO BLESS YOU, WHAT CAN I DO THAT JESUS HASN'T ALREADY DONE? YOU'RE ALREADY BLESSED. AND YET, MOST PEOPLE GO AROUND THINKING, I JUST NEED A BLESSING FROM GOD. I NEED A TOUCH FROM GOD. I NEED GOD TO GIVE ME MORE. I MEET PEOPLE ALL OF THE TIME THAT ARE JUST MORE, GOD, MORE, OH, GOD, GIVE ME MORE. WELL, I WILL SAY THIS, YOU CAN OPERATE IN MORE THAN WHAT MOST OF US ARE OPERATING IN, BUT you, GOD CAN'T GIVE YOU MORE. WHEN YOU'RE SAYING, OH, GOD, I JUST NEED MORE OF YOU, YOU CAN'T GET MORE OF GOD. YOU'VE GOT THE FULLNESS OF THE GODHEAD DWELLING IN YOU BODILY IS WHAT IT SAYS IN COLOSSIANS CHAPTER 2, VERSES 9 AND 10, AND YOU ARE COMPLETE IN HIM. YOU DON'T NEED GOD TO GIVE YOU MORE. WHERE IS GOD GOING TO GO TO GET MORE? IT SAYS, OF HIS FULLNESS HAVE ALL WE RECEIVED, AND GRACE FOR GRACE. THAT'S OUT OF JOHN CHAPTER 1, I BELIEVE IT'S AROUND VERSE 16, 17. OF HIS FULLNESS HAVE ALL WE RECEIVED. YOU'VE GOT THE FULLNESS OF GOD LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. WHEN YOU'RE SAYING, OH, GOD, I NEED MORE OF YOU, WHERE IS GOD GOING TO GET MORE TO GIVE YOU? NOW, YOU CAN DRAW ON MORE OF THAT. I UNDERSTAND THAT. YOU CAN RENEW YOUR MIND AND LET YOUR MIND COME UNDER THE CONTROL OF THE SPIRIT, AND YOU CAN WALK IN MORE OF GOD. YOU CAN MANIFEST MORE OF GOD. THERE'S ALWAYS MORE OF THAT BECAUSE NONE OF US HAVE TAPPED EVERYTHING THAT GOD HAS GIVEN US. BUT FOR YOU TO JUST SAY, OH, I NEED A BLESSING. I NEED MORE OF YOU. OH, GOD, GIVE ME MORE FAITH. GOD, GIVE ME MORE JOY. WHEN THE BIBLE SAYS, GALATIANS 5, 22, THAT YOU HAVE LOVE, JOY, PEACE, YOU'VE ALREADY GOT JOY. GOD DOESN'T HAVE ANY MORE JOY TO GIVE YOU. HE DOESN'T HAVE ANY MORE GRACE TO GIVE YOU. HE DOESN'T HAVE ANY MORE PEACE TO GIVE YOU. NOW, YOU CAN GET MORE GRACE, MORE FAITH, MORE JOY, MORE PEACE OPERATING IN YOU AS YOU RENEW YOUR MIND AND YIELD TO IT. THAT'S WHAT THIS WHOLE TEACHING IS ABOUT. WE CAN TUNE OUR RECEIVER TO GOD BETTER TO WHERE WE RECEIVE WHAT HE'S ALREADY GIVEN US, BUT YOU DON'T NEED TO BE BEGGING GOD FOR MORE. YOU NEED TO FIND OUT WHAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT AND START USING IT. I KNOW THAT THIS IS GOING COMPLETELY CONTRARY TO THE VAST MAJORITY OF CHRISTIANITY TODAY. MOST CHRISTIANS ARE IN A CONSTANT STATE OF, OH, GOD, I AM NOTHING, I HAVE NOTHING, I CAN DO NOTHING, BUT I KNOW THAT YOU CAN DO ALL THINGS. WOULD YOU PLEASE DO SOMETHING? AND WOULD YOU TOUCH ME? AND WOULD YOU RELEASE YOUR POWER? WOULD YOU HEAL MY BODY? WOULD YOU SEND ME FINANCES? THAT'S WHERE MOST CHRISTIANS LIVE. AND YET THAT'S NOT WHAT PAUL IS SAYING. PAUL SAYS, BLESSED BE THE GOD AND FATHER OF OUR LORD JESUS CHRIST, WHO HATH ALREADY BLESSED US WITH ALL SPIRITUAL BLESSINGS IN HEAVENLY PLACES IN CHRIST JESUS. YOU ARE ALREADY BLESSED, BUT IT'S IN YOUR SPIRIT. IT'S NOT IN YOUR SOUL. IT'S NOT IN YOUR BODY. YOU HAVE TO DRAW IT OUT. AND HOW DO YOU DRAW IT OUT? YOU FIRST OF ALL GOT TO BELIEVE IT'S THERE. I REFER BACK TO A SCRIPTURE I'VE USED A LOT, PHILEMON CHAPTER 1, VERSE 6. AND PAUL WAS PRAYING FOR PHILEMON, AND HE SAID, I PRAY THAT THE COMMUNICATION OF YOUR FAITH WOULD BECOME EFFECTUAL BY THE ACKNOWLEDGING OF EVERY GOOD THING THAT'S IN YOU IN CHRIST JESUS. 
TO ACKNOWLEDGE SOMETHING MEANS TO RECOGNIZE THE REALITY OF, TO ACKNOWLEDGE THAT IT'S ALREADY DONE. ACKNOWLEDGING SOMETHING ISN'T ASKING FOR SOMETHING TO BE DONE. YOU'RE ACKNOWLEDGING WHAT'S ALREADY DONE. YOU HAVE TO ACKNOWLEDGE WHAT'S ALREADY IN YOU. GOD HAS ALREADY GIVEN YOU EVERYTHING THAT YOU ARE PRAYING THAT HE WILL GIVE YOU. IT'S ALREADY IN THERE. YOU JUST HAVE TO DRAW IT OUT. AND THE FIRST STEP IS TO ACKNOWLEDGE THAT YOU'VE GOT IT. THE FIRST STEP IS TO BELIEVE THAT I'M BLESSED. AND YOU COULD SAY, WELL, I LOOK IN MY CHECKBOOK AND IT SAYS I'M NOT BLESSED. IT SAYS I'M OVERDRAWN. YOU MAY NOT BE ABLE TO SEE IT IN YOUR CHECKBOOK. YOU MAY NOT BE ABLE TO FEEL IT IN YOUR BODY. YOU MAY NOT BE ABLE TO FEEL IT IN YOUR EMOTIONS. YOU MAY NOT BE ABLE TO LOOK IN THE MIRROR AND SEE BLESSED WRITTEN ACROSS YOUR FOREHEAD. BUT IN THE SPIRITUAL REALM, YOU ARE ALREADY BLESSED WITH EVERYTHING YOU'LL EVER NEED. HEALING, PROSPERITY, DELIVERANCE, JOY, PEACE, WISDOM, KNOWLEDGE. IT'S ALREADY THERE. YOUR SPIRIT IS PERFECT. AND THE REST OF THE CHRISTIAN LIFE IS RENEWING YOUR MIND TO WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE IN YOUR SPIRIT. YOUR THREE PARTS, SPIRIT, SOUL, AND BODY. AND IF YOU GET YOUR SPIRIT AND YOUR SOUL IN AGREEMENT, THAT'S TWO AGAINST ONE, AND YOUR BODY JUST HAS TO MANIFEST THIS SUPERNATURAL ABILITY IN LIFE OF GOD. BUT IF YOU GET YOUR SOUL IN AGREEMENT WITH YOUR BODY GOING BY, WELL, I DON'T SEE IT, I DON'T FEEL IT, I DON'T TASTE IT, I CAN'T HEAR IT, I CAN'T SEE IT, WELL, THEN YOU BLOCK OFF THE POWER THAT'S IN YOUR SPIRIT. BUT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT. EVERYTHING THAT YOU ARE ASKING GOD FOR, GOD HAS ALREADY DONE. YOU JUST NEED TO GET OUT OF THE WAY. YOU NEED TO GET THIS CARNAL THINKING, THIS STINKING THINKING THAT BLOCKS THE FLOW OF GOD'S SPIRIT THROUGH YOU. IT SAYS IN um, PROVERBS CHAPTER 23, VERSE 7, FOR AS HE THINKS IN HIS HEART, SO IS HE. AND EVEN THOUGH YOU'VE GOT THIS LIFE OF GOD AND YOU'RE ALREADY BLESSED WITH ALL SPIRITUAL BLESSINGS, IF YOU DON'T KNOW IT, IF YOU'RE THINKING, I AM NOTHING, I HAVE NOTHING, I CAN DO NOTHING, THAT'LL JUST SHUT OFF THE FLOW OF GOD'S SPIRIT THROUGH YOU. IF YOU'RE THINKING WHEN IT COMES TO HEALING, BUT I'M SICK, HERE'S A DOCTOR'S REPORT, MY BODY FEELS THIS. IF YOU'RE ONLY GOING BY WHAT YOU CAN SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL, THEN YOU ARE SHUTTING OFF THE POWER THAT'S in ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. BUT YOU DON'T NEED GOD TO GIVE YOU HEALING. YOU'VE ALREADY BEEN HEALED. 1 PETER 2, 24, BY HIS STRIPES YOU WERE HEALED. YOU'VE ALREADY GOT RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. YOU JUST NEED TO BELIEVE IT'S THERE, LEARN HOW TO RELEASE IT, HOW TO COOPERATE AND DRAW THIS HEALING OUT. IT IS SO MUCH EASIER TO RELEASE SOMETHING YOU ALREADY HAVE THAN IT IS TO GO GET SOMETHING THAT YOU DON'T HAVE. I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY, BUT I WILL BE TEACHING ON THIS AGAIN TOMORROW. I'VE GOT THIS TEACHING ENTITLED, YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT, SO QUIT TRYING TO GET IT. I TELL YOU, THIS WOULD CHANGE YOUR LIFE. I'VE SEEN MANY, MANY, MANY PEOPLE'S LIVES CHANGE THROUGH THIS. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION ON HOW YOU CAN RECEIVE NOT ONLY THIS BOOK, BUT THE SPANISH BOOK, THE STUDY GUIDE, CD'S, AND DVD'S. WE HAVE AN ENTIRE PACKAGE. LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION, AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY.